if you want to keep this part in, I'm sure you can. Uh, but I'm going to just talk to chat really quick, see if chat has some good questions for it. One thing I never understood is I think they can come back with a new game in the Overwatch franchise. They'd be like, yay, Overwatch 2, and they killed the franchise like this. Um, for those who didn't see, there was rumors about, you know, Overwatch 2 being canceled. So I don't think that's true. I've just let's put that out there. I don't think that's true. Um, that, that, that just smelled like bullshit. Um, just because so much work has been done, it wouldn't make sense. You have a multi, multi-million dollar league that Pete teams have bought into with hundreds of, like, over millions of dollars. And, you know, that ain't happening. At worst, you just throw Overwatch 2 out there. And some people think the Overwatch League is going away. Overwatch League's not going away, going away either. Like, at the worst, you wait till Overwatch 2, see how Overwatch 2 goes, and then if it's a massive failure, then you see where to go from there. But until Overwatch 2 is gone, Overwatch 2, I mean, Overwatch League's not going to go anywhere. There's too much work put into Overwatch 2. Um, that being said, though, it doesn't mean we're in a good spot and it's going to get any better. Realistically, huge shout out to the Overwatch League team. The Overwatch League team has done a, 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 a magnificent job this year on on uh, making content and trying to keep... We have gotten more content, and, and if you don't believe me, we've gotten more content from Overwatch League than we've gotten from, from, from Blizzard this year. Almost. We got the May skin. We got the May skin. We got the Bastion skin. Um, we got... What else? What else? May Bastion. What am I missing, Cha? Echo. We got the Echo skin. Widow. Do we get a Widow skin? Really? Widow. Anna. Dude, these are all top tier. Roadhog. Oh, the Roadhog one was, was another good one. Roadhog. All of those skins, too, are top tier. They were not like the eh, throwaway trash ones. Don't get me wrong. Blizzard made good skins this year as well. I, I thought their skin game was very good this year. But, but like, think about that. The league is making skins at this point. The people, the, 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 the developers of the game slash the company that owns the game are making the same type of content their league, their esports league is making. There's no diversity. It's just, that's it. You play the game on a different skin. You know, that's all we got. I don't even got new maps. I, I, I There's a car cue tweet where he was like, I don't, at this point, I'll take back Horizon Lunar Colony in Paris just because we're starving. To be honest with you, I think he's crazy for that one. Those maps were just awful, but either way though, you know, it's just, it's just sad. It's just sad. Just um, thoughts on them releasing Sojourn to Overwatch 1 to keep it on life support? They don't care. I, I, I'm telling you, they do not care. Overwatch, Overwatch 1. See, there's a part, okay, there's actually a part of that leak that I kind of was like, well, maybe, because it, like, the thing about that leak that caught traction was it maybe had the shreddest of a doubt of truth in it, even though it was mostly, it was, it was a lie. It wasn't real. The part of the truth is it on being on life support is I think they genuinely are like, okay, let's just leave it. Don't put any more effort into it, but everything into this new thing at this point, because they have the numbers. They have the numbers, the 10 million monthly logins. I, I, I think, I think that's typical corporate numbers are skewed. Something's wrong with that. Um, something's wrong with that. Either that's that's not an average. That's like their best month in like the last year or something. You know, it's not that specific. It's a ten thousand monthly logins. That doesn't tell you if it's month by month. An average of all the months is at the top. It's a little different. Um. So no, it it won't happen. It literally wouldn't happen. <sighs> There's no way I get the same person in my ranked game four times in a night in plat with a 10 million. Well, here, I mean, look at your queue times. That's it. Just look at your queue times. You've got your answer. <sighs> How many of those are the same player with nine accounts? Oh, I made that argument the other day on Apex. Um, at this point, the game's five years old. And ask yourself, just honestly, if you're watching this, do you or does your friends have more than one Overwatch account? I would say maybe 50% of Overwatch players 
have at least a second account. At least 50%. I would say it's higher, but let's say let's be conservative and say 50. If that 10 million is is real and 50% of the players have a second account, you've already you've already turned down to 7.5. Not seven point five. Sorry, it's it's a little bit different. It's, you get what I'm saying. You 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 put you take a huge quarter or a chunk out of that. You know, because no longer it's it's no longer ten million. You know, if if fifty percent have a second account, you know, it's like, and then you get people that have two, three, four, five. But let's just say two, right? You get in dangerous territory. Now, also, do they count? Is it Blizzard login? So, if if does this count right here? Does this count? If this opens on my desktop automatically, does this count? Probably not. But hey, I'm at least putting the the question out there. My friend, an account manager says it is accounts that have logged in active, which is accounts logged in into in six months interesting interesting so then i count as at least three or four how confident are you that overwatch 2 is going to be a success based on your trust in the company and what they're capable of doing at first i was very confident i'm no longer very confident how do you play dps on your flats account because i'm not a four i'm not a 4400 dps player i'm not going to troll people's games like that's that's a it's a very easy question. On the other hand, flats aren't you losing viewers playing Apex? Yep, I am. And there's a lot of people that are like always like, oh, I want to see variety, etc. And then they don't like it. They're like, oh, why don't you play Overwatch? Yeah, you're not wrong. I dropped. I was actually starting to get over a thousand viewers a stream, and I've dropped to probably four th high threes, low fours, sometimes high fives. If sorry, high low fives if. It's late and Emong streams off and Jay streams off, etc. But I would have a I have a lot of room to grow, and I really do appreciate everybody that supports me on Apex. Um, but the ceiling is much higher uh, on Apex. It's you know I can at least try. I feel like I can get somewhere. You think the fact that Jeff Kaplan has left is a very very bad sign of the future? That's a good question. Um, and I think this is this is my honest take. I think the reason Jeff was let go because of how miserable of a failure Overwatch 2 uh, announcement was. I think Jeff Kaplan got let go because Overwatch 2 in the general public's eyes is a DLC added on to Overwatch 1. We don't we don't know if he stepped down, let go, etc. There's no details around that. Like technically like he resigned, etc. But like you don't actually know if he just left or he was asked to leave, etc. Like there's a lot there's we don't know the answer. This is my take, okay? We have a question mark there, so like, relax. Um, I think that they f miserably failed with the the announcement of Overwatch Two, to the point if you go to like any casual around the u and the internet, like if you just stumble along TikToks or YouTube comments of other games, etc., and Overwatch gets talked about, and Overwatch Two gets talked about, people believe genuinely that Overwatch 2 is just a DLC added for Overwatch 1. They have no clue that Overwatch 2 is its own standalone game. So most games start at their peak and then they slide down, but have to fight back up. Overwatch 2 is gonna start low and have to fight its way up, which is not an ideal situation for a game. They tried to revolutionize the idea of a sequel, but the deliverance was too confusing for the, the casual consumer even so that the competitive and people that had to be in the game more have to explain it over and over and over. And I've had to do that a million times. People come and go, well, well I want to just play Overwatch 1. Fuck Overwatch 2. I don't want to play 5v5. I'm just going to play Overwatch 1. And I go, well, guess what, buddy? Overwatch 1 ain't not going to exist, exist when Overwatch 2 comes out because Overwatch 1 is going to merge into Overwatch 2. And they just go... That don't make sense. And I'm like, you know, like, okay, that was kind of cool. But like, they, it doesn't make sense to them. It doesn't make sense. So it's already positioned itself to be in a bad place on launch. So think about that.
they're going to make a game that ca that caters to casual audiences. AK swapping to 5v5 so there's less tank players needing to be played, more shooty, you know. They're trying to make it a more casual game and they confused that audience. Think about that. That's trouble. That's trouble. And if you're someone who's more really ingrained in um, a hardcore avid Overwatch player and, you know, viewer, if you have a, friends that are casual Overwatch players or have casually played it, ask them what Overwatch 2 is. Don't tell them, just ask them. See how many of them get it right. Serious. Ask. Um, because if they don't know, that's a good example. You know? Do you think matchmaking is driving lower SR players away? I personally think it's a real problem. That's kind of a shit take. Do you think matching... Matchmaking is driving lower SR players away. So what, because you're shit, you're not going to play the game? That's kind of dumb. Is it fair to say other games are getting more content when you go, oh yeah, of course. Uh, and everything is as new as opposed to our five years over Overwatch. Well, Apex does this great thing where every season there's a mid-season split. So it changes the map it plays on, gets some balance updates, um, and, and we get new content at the start of the new month. So this is every two months. So every two months has a new content update. Every month has a reset. So think about it that way. Um, every month they at least get some kind of jolt where it's like they change the way the whole game is played and everybody's ranks get knocked down a little bit. So you have to keep playing to keep your rank up. If you don't play, your rank goes down. Remember when a game like Overwatch used to do that? Now it doesn't. So yes, um, it's frustrating to see other games get so much content, we get nothing. Um, again, as a creator, this is why I don't, I wanna start moving. And I look at the option of moving. You know, so at skin events, there hasn't been a competitive content since Echo. Uh, I mean, I don't think it's been competitive content forever. Um, and it was, you know, like think about it this way. Valorant got leaked that they're getting an in-game tournament system. We have asked for that since 2016. Simple as that. What do you think of the rumors of Activision has pushed Overwatch 2 to have more microtransactions or a battle pass included? Do you think it's plausible? I think that's the only way forward. That's legitimately the only way forward for the game to survive as a business. I don't think that there's anything else, but I think they've gone too late. I think the timing is getting ruined. <sighs> now, people say, oh, with COVID, it got the, the production got slowed down. And no, and I agree. I don't disagree with that. But at the same time, though, other games have managed to keep up and still do well. And we couldn't. They didn't monetize current Overwatch real. It's not possible. Nobody wants loot boxes. You can just play and get them for free. The Overwatch League will be on Overwatch 2, though. So that will help make them want to play Overwatch 2. Yeah, but we don't know when Overwatch 2 is coming. Like, the, the thought is next year's Overwatch League is going to be delayed for Overwatch 2. What happens if Overwatch 2 is delayed even further past 2022? They're not going to take another year off the League. They will not do it. Because there, it would be the worst thing ever. Because you'd have so you would have twenty teams that have sponsorship contracts with 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 sponsors that are expecting content the next year. That would be a that is a fucking nightmare, not only for the league but every single team to have to deal with. Um, imagine if the NFL just took the year off. Oh, remember COVID? You know, they did not want to fucking take that year. Uh -uh. They were like, no shot. Like, we're, we, they, every, every league did everything they could possible to make sure they didn't have to take a year off. Why? Y'all know why. Do you think Overwatch could be saved if Overwatch 2 development team was sold to off to another company like EA? For, they won't sell it, though. They they have no reason to. And, and I don't think anyone's going to buy it unless they sell it on the cheap. That just That just doesn't really happen. You know, like... You'd have to have, like, fucking Microsoft money to come in and yoink it from them, you know? From Twitch was so terrible. Yeah, I mean, Twitch gave them a lot of money those first two years, and they said, no, they're not paying them like that again, and that's why they went to YouTube. It was kind of like a chase the money situation, and... <sighs> you know. Overwatch should update the game, not make Overwatch 2. I don't do I don't totally agree with that. I think Overwatch 2 is good to have, but I think the way that they've handled it is disgusting. It's awful. Like, you can't. Every time a game has a, a another game coming, 
they still give it at least some sort of of content to keep it alive to make sure so they think of it this way there's like two graphs right you have this new game ready to go and your game's slowly going slowly going slowly going slowly going and then once you get to the second game everybody transfers and there's a jump right so think of it this way as the first one decreases that lowers how many jump because it'll have a new influx of new players but a lot of the old players also transfer if those old players are if so many of them gave up and doesn't want to play there anymore and they're gone you only get a certain percentage of them to come over do you get what i'm saying like you will end up losing in the long run so many more potential players because they've just given up and found something else like Yes, and you can and you can argue and you can argue and be like, oh, but like old players will be like, oh, new game, I'll go play it. But will they though? Like, yes, there will be a lot, but not as many as you could have had if you just kept the other game alive. But you're choosing not to. Probably in the sake of not wanting to pay people for it, to do it. Blizzard hasn't had a huge multiplayer game other than WoW. That was a huge success. So they're treating Overwatch like they do WoW. Once they announce an update and expansion, they ignore the previous content. That doesn't work for non-MMOs. I mean, even WoW he has struggled with that in the past. And I mean, WoW's struggling right now. Kind of. Like, I mean, they've had a massive drop-off in subscriptions since people ride, moving to Final Fantasy, like King. like Asmongold. I mean, am I wrong on that? I mean, I don't know the exact numbers, but I think a lot of people have left WoW since Asmongold fucking threw down the gauntlet and said, nah, fuck this, I'm out, you know? Like is WoW is WoW getting into is WoW starting the trend where we were when XQC left and when Tim left? Maybe, maybe. Somehow shit talking Overwatch makes me want to play it. Well, that's the beauty of Overwatch is people seeing people seeing people playing it and having fun with it or et cetera or at least just like you know like having one good. I'll say this: whenever I watch you know like other streamers and stuff have a good game, I'm like, damn, I kind of want to load up and just start my stream and go play now. But if people aren't streaming it anymore and people aren't making content for it anymore, the game will die. I, or, or, Overwatch, Overwatch and Blizzard are the only company or one of the only companies left in the industry that doesn't understand that if you don't keep your game alive, not only with content, but keep your streamers and, and content creators happy and like don't listen at all. The, okay, and this is, okay, you, you, if you're sitting in and you're like, well, what the fuck? Like, why are you so special? I'm not saying that. We are gamers just like everybody else. The only difference between me and, and someone in chat is that people will sit and listen to my opinion more. Now, we can differ, but over the overarching, we all want the same thing. We want to have a better game. We want to play more. So someone like myself or other streamers having that voice and people listening to that voice means that the game is at least getting some attention and getting some some feedback and like at least people will feel like the game is moving in some direction now some people will be like no i don't like that that change and that's okay to disagree but we're all sitting on an island right now on a rock and nobody's moved like we can't go forward we can't go backwards can't go left can't go right we're literally stuck i'm not saying like you know you give the streamers like oh you know uh like they have they're better than you right like oh no like i'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that at all what i'm saying is is that is a voice to listen to that's one collective voice you can't if thousand people if there's thousands of people in the room yelling right it's hard to hear but it's the same thing with like you know with, with government and unions etc you typically have a, a body of people that speak through a single individual that single individual embodies the rest of the group and tells that other side their problems concerns what their wants and needs are that's what streamers and, and content creators do for the community. If they aren't getting anything and we're not getting anything at all, you guys aren't also getting anything at all. I don't want, I'm not saying, I don't, I don't want some special privileges. I want to have something that everybody gets as well. But as a, we get to be the voice of everybody else. Now we can disagree. We can disagree. And that's fine. But at least there's someone hearing so, uh, the pleas of other people in the group. Might be not be the same pleas you have, but at least someone's is getting heard. And that doesn't happen here. Doesn't happen. Oh, uh, that's a good one. 
I didn't confuse. I just started getting an Overwatch, and I played it when it first came out. And it seems like the game just more characters. When do you, when do you say make the good game good again? Do you mean new content or yes? I mean new content, but like even further than that. Like new content is the minimum. Like like that is the basis, the basis uh, uh, of what what is needed. You know, like it's not. That's not the golden arches gate. That's the starting line. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, like if I, I got to write a laundry list for you to say what we need. Sure. We need microtransaction monetization. That way, you know, you can have weekly, monthly, daily events um, with skins and rewards, sprays, etc. Now that also transitions into daily, you know, or weekly or monthly events slash raids slash goals. Apex, you have your daily challenges. Overwatch, you could have the same exact thing. Something to at least log in every day and do. Now, what would that reward you with? Well, the only thing we've gotten for competitive points in the last five years is golden weapons. What happened? What about bronze, silver, gold, diamond, platinum weapons? What about green weapons, blue weapons, strobe weapons, rainbow weapons, etc.? There are so many other things they could have done with them. At least have the ability to start changing them. Charms, um, battle pass system, creator codes. Have a reason to have people come and promote your game. Have a reason to promote the battle pass, promote what's in the game. Have a reason to give the developers, give the team a reason to make fucking content. That's why I say when Overwatch 2 comes out, the way it survives is off of microtransactions and a free to play system. A free to play system changes the whole game the way it works. Free to play, yes, there's problems with smurfing and, 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 and cheating and stuff like that. And we get that. that, that's a big problem. But however, we got to get it to the point where people actually want to fucking smurf and cheat in the game. Yes, there's cheaters in Overwatch and there's a massive ban wave that just happened, but that's the first ban wave in like three months. If you talk about Warzone, Warzone fucking had a ban wave after like two weeks, it was 100,000. The game is not doing hot. Give it a reason for people to like it. Give it a reason to come back. Free to play has drawbacks. I don't disagree. But at the same time though, it also opens the door for a lot of people to want to try and play the game. Overwatch is one of the best games ever, in my opinion. The way it flows, the way fights happen, the way teamwork works, the way, you know, uh, interaction, gunplay slash uh ability play it's one of the best ever and other games have, have have changed it and done their own style with it but overwatch did a magnificent job of building on previous game style like you some people say like tf2 and paladin star and built upon that and made a better version and i think that the the, the pace the team play etc is top tier doesn't mean the game is good again Look at the last three killers added to DBD. No one plays them except Nemesis and you still see killers like Leatherface and Legion and others played more. You're missing the point though. Just because the hero, people don't play the hero, those heroes doesn't mean that it's not new content. And... <laughs> Like, I, I don't even know how to, I'm sorry, like, I, I, I don't mean to be rude, but there's no way to dissect to, to that without saying, like, it's, that just does, kind of doesn't make sense. Because if you give something something new and people don't play it because they don't like the style it plays, that doesn't mean it's better than not having anything at all. It means that they can get buffed, nerfed, or reworked. And what you do is you have this team here, this team over here that does buffs, nerfs, balance patches and you have this team here that creates new content this team passes that to this team and they bring in something new so that down the line let's say in a few months there's some buffs nerfs reworks to that hero and all of a sudden people enjoy it more this side and the entire time has been now working to build something new and something exciting that maybe someone else will enjoy or a group of players will join or the entire community will enjoy but there's something coming out of the factory there's nothing coming out of the factory anymore we've already boarded up the doors there's nails on it there's a big old sign that says dead so those don't really compare what else does overwatch need glad you asked 
pass free to play. This game needs a revival that's so deep that I don't know is possible. We're gonna game. Appreciate you get a sub to Angry Captain. Appreciated. It would need to go down the Apex Legends route. Apex Legends kind of died, and it came back not because all these Magic streamers started playing it. It started play the Magic streamers started playing it because the game got good. And it fucking worked its way back up the curve and it fought its way back up the mountain with new heroes, new patches, new gunplay, new guns released, new uh, new patches, uh, mid-season resets, a ranked battle pass system that worked. Now, it's perfect, no, but it's it's pretty damn good. They did a lot of good shit. Now, is it perfect? No. Of course, everyone will have something to bitch about, just like every game. But you know what's funny? From an Overwatch perspective, we go over and go look at another game, and they're complaining about the small shit, right? Well, at least they have something to complain about on the small shit. We don't have anything to complain about anymore. We just complain and says the game sucks. We got nothing to complain about anymore because we don't have anything. My personal take. Overwatch is a fantastic idea and baseline for a game just feels like there has not really been a change since 2018. I feel a lot of bundle packs and added content on a normal schedule would be very revitalizing. That's the boss, you're not wrong. Boss, you are you're right on. But we have nothing. LGS slash pro scene. When was the last didn't we get Twitch? I think the last Twitch Rivals was 2019. Right? It was like it was like a workshop Twitch Rivals. I wasn't even a streamer yet. I wasn't in it. We're never getting anything like that. We'll never get some tournaments. We'll never get some fun stuff. You know, most of the tournaments that we've gotten are fucking community run. Goddamn Fran has to come in all out of the fucking clouds and and come down and be like, here, have this bountiful tournament and fucking to give give people something to do. She did it twice. Tell me why Fran is doing more shit. I think the reason most of us are addicted to this game, Dumbledore, is because this game plays like no other game has ever played before. And that's what people enjoy. But at some point, it wears off. It's starting to wear off for a lot of people. Jane did more Overwatch than the devs, and he's gone too. Here's my hot take. I think the community was was disgusting to Jane. Fucking disgusting. It actually made me sick to my stomach. This dude literally did everything for the community. Fucking everything. And people just spit in his face over it. Why? Because people were begging for fucking... People were begging in the Overwatch League for having spicy content and having people fucking uh, shit talk and, like, you know, have some, uh, you know, some hot takes and have some trash talk. And Jane joined in it, and people, people fucking tore him apart. People tore him apart for it. Jane's production was very high quality. Jane was the only dude I've ever fucking met that rehearsed his stream. He would, he would have rehearsals to make sure that they went as smooth and as cool as they did. And we lost that. We fucking lost that. You know why? In my opinion, there was a lot of fucking people, especially when Jane first was around, but because Jane took that break, right? When Jane was first around and he did all of his, you know, his guest my SR slash, you know, like the tournaments and pugs and stuff like that. There was a lot of people that want to be involved with it, but they couldn't be involved with it. You know, and they saw all these other people doing well and having fun with it. And Jane grew like, astronomically fucking fast. That dude, that dude went from 500 viewers to a fucking 10,000 in like a month. No, it wasn't a month. It was like it was like six months. But regardless, though, I think a lot of people got fucking jealous of that and didn't like that he was kind of like dad humor, like, you know, like uh huh, like kind of like a little bit like you know a little bit quirky with it, a little bit of fun. Um, and they and they just tore him down over it and tore down his mental over that. It was just fucking gross, bro. It's fucking gross.